Now I want to bring on a, 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 a friend of mine, uh, a, a business partner, somebody who has, has been a mentor to me, uh, somebody who I, I, I trust, uh, and trust is a very important word here in this space, somebody that I've known now for uh, over six or seven years, uh, somebody who when I got started in the industry was still building network marketing teams. And uh, in my first business, really, we had an opportunity to work together and I got to, to learn and, and follow this gentleman. And then over the course of the last six or seven years, a lot of you guys know the, the story about how, you know, when we got a phone call from, from Ron back in, uh, you know, in July and, uh, you know, Ron said, uh, you know, you, you, you guys are going to want to take a look at this thing. One of the main reasons, if not the most important reason we got started was because Ron had never called me one time in six years and said, hey man, you know, I got a comp plan here that you guys can make a lot of money in, or hey, hey man, there's, I got my hands on this really great product or service and I know you guys will, will kill it. Uh, but uh, I'm not gonna steal any of, any of thunder there and I just wanna introduce and say, hey Ron, how you doing buddy? I'm doing real good, Justin. Thanks for having me out here today. We've got all the slides and we can go through some of this, some of this stuff, but you know, and, and we will just to kind of stay on track. But if you could if you could do us just a, a favor here and talk to us a little bit about before you even brought it to me, like what when did you learn about the product? I uh, we, we know now that you've you know you've known Waskar for a for a long period of time. Talk to us a little bit about you know what happened before you even called me. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. There wasn't actually a whole lot that happened before that, Justin. Um, it was a kind of a organic uh, situation that took place, but um, it was towards the end of May. It, was, it, it, it all runs together anymore, as you know. Uh, but yeah, Waskar reached out to me. Now, I've known Waskar for um, a little over nine years, and uh, I was COO for a company that he was one of the top producers for. And so when we uh, broke into the Caribbean uh, market, Waskar was the leader for Dominican Republic, and uh, I had gotten to know, know Waskar over the course of some time, uh, over the phone, over, you know, email communication, uh, you know, Skype, things like that. Uh, back then, we were using a lot of Skype. Now, it's all WhatsApp, seems to me. But, um, you know, as we, as we were talking, um, I was getting to know the guy over the phone, and I thought, you know, I really need to go out and spend some time with him. Uh, because anybody that knows me, I, I, I put a good team together and I keep them with me. I mean, I got guys that are still with me from 20 years ago. And so um, I was really, you know, hitting it off well with Waskar, but I wanted to go out, check him out and see what he was all about. And so we ended up booking a trip out to uh, Santa Domingo as well as Punta Cana. We were out there for about two weeks and we started that trip off. Um, it was, it was I'll, I'll kind of give you guys a visual, okay? Because I had no idea what we were coming into. I knew we were going to be meeting with the Minister of, uh, of Tourism, which in Dominican Republic is, is, is as important as like the Vice President of the United States, mm -hmm. okay? Um, so because, I mean, obviously tourism is such a, a big market for uh, Dominican Republic. And so as we were landing, it was about 10 o'clock at night, and we're coming into the airport, and there's just police lights everywhere. And I thought, what are we going into here? And uh, so when we landed, it was actually, they were for us. And it was kind of cool, you know, we got a motorcade over to our resort, so we got picked up and escorted. And then uh, the next day we got taken over to um, the uh, Minister of, of Tourism's office, uh, where we were able to go in and, and uh, talk to him about what we were doing with the, with the travel company at the time and, and uh, you know, what it could do for their economy. Because, you know, a lot of, a lot of your third world countries have a, a lower class and an upper class, but there's not a lot of middle class, okay? So that's kind of what we were going in for. And the, the um, two nights before we left uh, Santa Domingo, we had a meeting that was planned. And so Waskar uh, and his team had a bunch of people come in, about six, 700 people. And so we did a meeting. We got a standing ovation at the end, and they asked us to come back the next night. Well, we didn't typically just do a 24-hour notice and do another meeting, but we went ahead and did it. And what was really neat was on the first night, everybody seemed to know Waskar. And... Um, and the, he greeted everybody with a hug. He really liked, you know, the, the environment that he was in. Well, the next night, it was literally busloads of people coming in because they had heard about the meeting and what was going on. And, and uh, we had people coming over from Haiti and stuff. So it was really exciting. But again, what I saw was Waskar as a leader. 
you know, and how he embraced his team and how his team all knew him. And so that really impacted me. From there, we went on to spend about a week out in Punta Cana and uh, just some really, you know, good downtime to get to know each other. And anyways, we hit it off. We became friends and, and uh, that's carried us over the years. He and I have looked for, you know, different projects, different home runs to do together. Uh, we actually looked at doing an ICO, initial coin offering. But at the time, the U.S. government was very um, aggressive towards ICOs because there was a lot of uh, bad ICOs being brought to the market. So we passed on that. And at that time, Waskar went on to another company that he did extremely well with, uh, was making a ton of Bitcoin every month. And so, you know, it was a couple, we, we'd stayed in communication, but it was a few years later, he called me and said, hey, listen, I've got this thing that I've been doing and I want to roll it out to the public. And I think it's the home run we've been looking for. And the first question I asked him was, can we help millions of people with it? He said, yeah, we can. And I said, globally? He said, yeah, globally. I said, okay, what are you doing? And so uh, my wife and I, we sat down here in my office and Waskar presented the very first PowerPoint to us. And I don't even think it was completed at that time. Mm -hmm. um, it was kind of a, a rough draft of it. And what had happened was Waskar had spent about a year working on his system, okay? Um, building up uh, his knowledge of Forex, building up his trade team and, and getting algorithms in place and testing the algorithms, trading the algorithms live. And uh, the results he was seeing was just absolutely incredible. And uh, about 18 years ago, 17, 18 years ago, I developed a bot and uh, I didn't have backup algorithms. So it was a very short life for it. And uh, we did good. I mean, eight to 13% a week that we were hitting, but um, when it was done, it was done. You know, it was just, we didn't have the algorithms to uh, continue. We didn't develop them at the time. And so when I, when I started looking into what Waskar had, I asked him, I said, so how many algorithms do you have? And he said, well, we've got a handful of them. I said, well, what are you going to do about the future? He said, oh, we have a, a team that is headed up by my partner, Edwin Abad, and uh, they're always developing new algorithms and testing new algorithms for months and months before we ever actually live, uh, you know, live trade them. And I said, oh, wow, that's, that's incredible. That's exactly what needs to happen. And when I, looked, when I heard about the results he was getting, um, I said, listen, are you going to be full transparent? He said, yeah, I want to be transparent. I want to do things that the market's never seen before. And uh, I said, okay, so, um, you know, wh what kind of returns are you seeing? And he told me, I'm not even going to tell you guys here because, I mean, it was obviously turned up and uh, trading very aggressively, had some leverage to it and stuff. And I said, okay, but if we're going to take this to the market, we got to turn that down a little bit. You know, um, one, you don't want to risk, you know, client money, which he, he said, oh, yeah, of course, we don't, you know, we don't want to lose any money on behalf of our members. I said, but two, you get too high of a return and your um, regulating authorities aren't going to believe it either. And so um, the, the version that you guys see is turned, is, is tuned down. I mean, the system that Oscar has his hands on um, is, is amazing. I mean, it's aggressive what it can do. Um, but he turned it down a little bit and uh, made a lot of uh, different, you know, enhancements, modifications to get it ready for the market. Uh, we rebuilt the PowerPoint. We, uh, <laughs> I was given three weeks to get all the programming done, which usually takes six to eight weeks minimum. Um, but, you know, I talked to my partner uh, and my CTO and, and uh, my chief marketing officer, uh, talked to the partners and they said, yeah, if this is what you think we need to do, let's do it. So we cleaned off our plate. We had a bunch of clients boarding at the time with us. We, we support dozens of network marketing companies globally. And uh, that's also why I wasn't, you know, presenting network marketing was I didn't want anything that was a conflict of interest with any of my clients. And the thing about Cash FX as I was looking at it is there's really no conflict of interest because you could do this with any business you're in right now, not leave your primary business, but have this as another stream of income. Because any anytime you meet a millionaire, billionaire, whatever whatever you know, caliper of person you meet, they, they have multiple streams of income. Okay. And so I saw this as another great stream of income that anybody could add to anything they're doing, whether that be a job or you know um, they've they've got a, a brick and mortar business, they've got a consulting business, or they got a network marketing business. It didn't matter. This was a perfect fit for all of them. You didn't have to be an expert uh, trader, okay? Which was very important. I trained for years under uh, Jared Martinez from Market Traders Institute, and uh, it, it really is extensive to learn how to forex trade. Um, effectively and, 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 and develop a great lifestyle. And so uh, when I talked to Waskar about what is your product, he said, well, we're going to teach people how to trade, but we want to break it down. Well, we had just finished some e-learning 
um, the Conversion Pros, my company, had just finished some e-learning for a biotech company that I owned uh, since of sold. Uh, but we developed e-learning for the industry. And so we started talking about that. And with e-learning, you know, looking at a 900% growth right now between now and 2025, um, it, I was like, man, this is perfect for what you're trying to do. You don't need a classroom setting. You don't need people traveling anywhere, any of that stuff. And, you know, a lot of times when you go through something for the first time, you're going to retain about 20 or 30% where e-learning gives you the ability to go back and always rewatch and rewatch. Okay. Um, and so... Hey, leave it right there, actually, Justin. That's a perfect slide. I'll talk about that next. But uh, with the e-learning, you know, it allows for more productivity um, with with less uh, human involvement. Okay. So again, you can you can watch it. You can interact with the e-learning. You can you know audio whatever. You're learning from several different uh, ways. Okay. And so you retain more of it, and then you always have it to go back and watch again. But as you can see, these stats down here that Justin just flashed up, it's 40, 40 to sixty percent less time than a classroom involvement, which means that the corporate office, being a startup like it is, has time to put their energy into other development other infrastructure, you know, because that was another thing I asked Waspar, how long do you want to be around? What's your intention? He said, oh, I want to be here for 20 years. I said, great. You're what I call a legacy company. And I said, that's, that's all I'm looking to build is legacy companies. I'm at an age now where, you know, with my, with my career, I spent the last 20 years building up my reputation, my infrastructure, you know, my, 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 I call it my cookie cutter uh, way of doing business. This is my 21st startup that I've assisted on. And so there's a certain way of doing things. And I said, that, that's, that's perfect, you know, that you uh, want to be a legacy-based company. And so what we, you know, started off with and, and have continued with is building an infrastructure underneath CashFX that is very similar to like what you'd see in a Fortune 500, Fortune 100 company. And it will continue to evolve and develop as time goes on. I, I always, you know, when I'm working on different client projects and things, I always remind them that you're focused on the goal, but you got to be flexible on the approach. Okay, and how many times, if you guys have been here with CashFX for very long, you know, they'll be heading in one direction, and then they need to sidestep a little bit, still in the right direction, but they sidestep, and it makes it even better than what we had anticipated, okay? And then when I realized, you know, okay, this is going to be involved in the Forex market, why is that so important to me? Not only have I been a Forex trader for years, but at the same time, I understand the market, and when you, when you go into something, you want a huge market cap. Okay, you, you just you want as big of a market as you could possibly get. Well, the forex market trades five point three trillion dollars a day. All right, so if you it's hard to fathom that many zeros. I understand that. So let's start off small. How about the New York Stock Exchange? Twenty billion dollars being traded. That's a very large market. Most people think, oh, it can't get any bigger than the New York Stock Exchange. Depends on the circle you run in. Depends on you know your your paradigm. It depends on where your mindset is. But the equities market is actually 191 billion. And then you take your futures market at 437, add all those together, guys, and they're a fraction of what the Forex market does daily. All right, what does that mean? It means that that market right there is going to be more sustainable when it comes to market shifts like the, the, the pandemic that we're in right now. Okay, now you saw uh, Cash FX make some shifts. Okay, at, at one point they came off of the actual bots that do the trading. Okay. Uh, they had to because those bots, the algorithms were set up to trade, you know, fast and uh, different market conditions. So that's when Edwin and the team came in and literally started doing some some manual trading and uh, using the same techniques and everything while they're developing other algorithms in the back end. All right. So it was absolutely uh, incredible to see the way in which they shifted and really it, should, it, 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 it honed in on and, and, and magnified the ability and the skill set of uh, Edwin and his trading team, all right? And so, you know, it's great. We got all the electronic stuff, but guys, it's, it's absolutely critical that the guys doing the trading understand how to do the trading. And you couldn't have put them through a better test than what we just went through. So absolutely incredible what took place there. So anyways, as I'm talking to Waskar about, you know, the company and what it's going to look like, I ask him, hey, what about transparency? He says, yeah, I want to be absolutely transparent. So then my mindset goes to regulatory authorities, all right? Waskar, what happens if the SEC or the CFTC, CFTC, guys, is the commodity side of it, SEC is the security side, okay? Commodity side, why is that so important? Well, if you don't realize it, Bitcoin is actually regulated as a commodity 
Therefore, it would be the CFTC that would look at us. On the network marketing side, it's the SEC. Okay, so awesome, right? So we get both of them. And uh, so um, that, that was what I asked him. I said, what if the authorities want to come in and, and take a look at your books? And he said, that's fine. I said, what if they want to have you uh, have those audited by a major you know, global bank? He said, great, let's do it. He said, matter of fact, if they want to come in, tell me when they want to come and I'll fly them in and put them up while they're here. He said, I have no problem with that. I want to be full transparent. I want to be full legal. And my intentions going forward are nothing but that. Okay. Now I know Waskar's morals and values, integrity is honesty. Matter of fact, it's even in the PowerPoint things if you guys, you know, go through the presentation, but uh, there it is right there. <laughs> there it is. So um, the reason that's so important is that, you know, for the last nine years, if, if Waskar wasn't going to uphold those morals and values, I would have seen it by now. Okay. Yeah. So when he tells me my intentions are nothing but, you know, to, to make this legacy company with full transparency, Look at what's happened over the last, well, we launched officially, I think it was July 15th, all right? Yeah. Uh, Pre-launch was in June. And uh, so what's happened since then to now has been transparency, transparency, transparency. You know, a lot of people were asking about FX book um, or my FX book. That's something that's still being looked at. There was some algorithm things that we want to back load all of the trades into. But at the same time, guys, look at your back office right now. You got web TV, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So let me back it up a little bit. <clears throat> web TV is a live trading in your back office if you haven't seen it yet. Uh, when they're not live trading, you'll still have some recordings. You can actually look at the ticker and line them up. So anyways, going back a little bit here. So after I went through all this stuff with him, talked about his numbers, talked about transparency, all this type of stuff, talked to my partners, decided, hey, we're going to go ahead and take on the project, um, which was quite a shift. I mean, we were, we were looking at crypto mining companies and a bunch of stuff at that time. Uh, we were, you know, starting on the uh, processing and exchange platforms and things. And, and so we put all that on hold. And uh, <clears throat> here's the two individuals right here, Waskar Lopez, our CEO, and Edwin Abad, our uh, uh, VP of Trading and Operations. So those are the two of the individuals I was just speaking about. I'll come back full circle to here in a moment. But um, so what I wanted to do was after, you know, after I understood what it was Waskar was going to be doing with this company, I'd accepted the project. I picked up the phone and I ran it by Justin. I said, hey, I know you're involved in another crypto uh, project right now and it's going pretty good for you. Um, I said, I'm not calling to recruit you, buddy. I just want to get your feeling on this. What do you think about, and I just gave him a quick, I don't know, probably a 10 minute, you know, uh, just to download and said, what do, you, what do you think of something like that? And he goes, you know what? I think that would actually be really good. He said, I know you said it wouldn't be a conflict of interest. He said, actually, I think it's perfect uh, compliment for what we're doing right now. And I said, well, that's, that's great, man. And I said, uh, he goes, how soon can I sign up? <laughs> and I said, well, the software is not even in place. We just now accepted the project. Why don't you give me a little bit of time here? And uh, so it was later that day. <clears throat> he called back again. He said, hey, I talked to my partner about this. And uh, uh, Luigi. And he said, uh, he's excited about it, too. I want to bring him on for a minute. So he brought Luigi on. We, we went through and answered some questions and things. And again, working off very limited knowledge back then. And uh, Luigi reiterated what Justin said, hey, how soon can we sign up? And so it was, you know, it was one of those. I said, give me, give me a little bit of time. We at least got to get to a point with the software where we can accept, you know, uh, signups. And uh, so when, as soon as we did, Justin had been in contact with me constantly, you know, find out how things were going. And so as soon as we, uh, as soon as we opened the doors, um, Justin was, was uh, one of the uh, very first people into Cash FX and excitedly so too. I mean, it was, he could not wait. It was like waiting for Christmas morning to come. He understood, um, you know, God had bestowed him with a vision of what was put in front of him. And uh, there was nothing that was going to take that away from him. And uh, so Justin, I appreciate, you know, your, your aggressiveness getting into the company as well as, you know, well, as you stated, 26,000 other people are here today because of that vision that you and Luigi had at the very beginning and where this was going. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, it was, it was absolutely um, perfect timing, uh, right place, right time, you know, it really was. So, all right, guys, so I've talked quite a bit about uh, Waskar and Edwin. Let's continue forward here. I guess I'll do the front end of your presentation here for you there guys. You go. um, what's that? I said, there you go, that works. Why not, right? Why not? Okay, so while we were out in um, Punta Cana, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Panama City. I know where I'm at. When we were out in Panama City, what in November, those beautiful countries. 
<laughs> one of those beautiful countries. Their water is beautiful and uh, country is amazing. So anyways, while we were out there for the grand launch in November, um, I was already pervious to this, that Waskar had been searching for um, office space in that area. And guys, remember when I asked him, you know, how long are you going to be around? He said, I want to be a legacy company. Well, legacy companies do certain things to create a footprint, a permanent footprint. Whereas uh, in my last 20 years of consulting in the network marketing and, and traditional uh, corporate America on a global scale, there's certain things that start to happen when a company says one thing, but then their intentions are totally different. You'll start to see temporary things getting put in place. All right. But that never happened here with Cash FX. It was never about temporary. It was always about, you know, if we do this, can we make it scalable for later? Okay. So when you're talking scalability, that means you've got forward vision. You've got a, you know, a long-term vision here. So when we got to uh, Panama, it was really exciting to be able to take people over and show them the new 10,000 square foot office that Cash FX bought. Okay. They didn't lease this space. They bought the space. And that's one of those things about creating that permanent footprint. Okay. On top of that, at the event, some members of Congress were there. All right. Why would that happen? Well, Waskar is actually friends with the president of Panama. And uh, it was involved in you know, some of his, his campaigning that got him elected as president. So as the office is, is nearing completion, um, now obviously these are digital prints here. All the TVs were up. It looked like Wall Street while we were there. Uh, there's a little office there. But a lot of the flooring and the walls and things like that were unfinished. Cash FX is importing all that from Brazil, along with the different furnishings and things like that. So obviously the pandemic has slowed that down. And so uh, where they thought that they were already going to be launched and that we were going to be literally right now, right now in Punta Cana. Um, I yeah. know that because this it was going to happen. What's that? We were supposed to be there this weekend. Yeah. Yeah. I know that because it was, it was going to be, my daughter was going to do her uh, 20th birthday out there. I know. And it was supposed to be my birthday weekend there. There you go. Exactly. Yes. Happy birthday, Justin. Um, so, yeah. It, so, I mean, obviously we had this big birthday thing planned and, and uh, you know, Justin and Brooke and, and uh, anyways, this was going to be a, a real fun environment. And uh, so that didn't get to happen though, you know, but that's okay. It's going to happen. But um, so while we were, you know, out there and getting to experience this amazing office and, and uh, just getting to, you know, meet all the individuals, there was, uh, I would say, there was market makers. Now what market makers are, sorry about the landscapers out back here, guys. Um, what the market makers, what I refer to as market makers is somebody who is, uh, has a large enough team that could literally sway markets. Okay. So Thailand, uh, Philippines, Malaysia, Africa, mm -hmm. you know, when you bring people in that have 50,000, a hundred thousand, 200, a half a million, even a million people, we met with folks at the grand launch that were that large. Yeah. Okay. I think our largest guy there had 1.2 million people in his downline. And so uh, all of the market makers were absolutely blown away. And um, which has been a great result, as Justin talked about, we've uh, more than quadrupled the size of the company since November. Yeah. And um, so uh, the office space, this will be done here um, as soon as the markets open back up and we have the opportunity to finish the furnishings and everything. Uh, this this will be open back up and then there's an open door policy guys where you guys can come in and meet the corporate staff You know, obviously call ahead because uh, not all the staff is there 24 um, 7 So, you know call ahead, but come on in check out the office check out, you know meet meet the people behind the scenes That's so amazing, you know, because when you're talking about the office Ron, I just want to add you know Like we've all been part of companies that promise they have an office The next thing you know you have somebody in your city that says hey, I live near that city. Let me go see it so they go there, and the next thing they know, they call there's you back no and office. say, yeah, there's an office, there's an address, but there's nobody there. I mean, Or, or it's the size of a closet. <laughs> so, you know, guys, to really have a real owners, like we've told you, we've repeated it on every call. We've met them. We know they're real. We know who they are. They have a real office. We saw it. And, you know, you'll be have the honor of going to Panama whenever yeah. you want. Actually go there. I mean, you'll be so proud of this office. So. Go ahead, I mean, th those are just just to interject. Uh, th those are what we, we've been telling people for 10 months is it, it's great to hear the right things 
from owners. You want to hear that they have the right things in place, but then when you watch what they do, the level of investment that is continually being made into the infrastructure, the headquarters, the software, the technology, the marketing, I mean, they're constantly uh, making these investments. Like you said, Ron, I mean, these are the signs of a legacy company. Absolutely. And you know, Justin, that's a really good point, you know, that when you watch what they do, because too many times people will draft a contract and they go, oh, everything's solid now. It's not just what's on the contract because, mm -hmm. you know, one way to break a contract is to go out of business, right? To, yeah. to mismanage your business. So when you're looking to, to see where a company is going, you need to, you need to watch them. You need to listen to them. You need to read what's been put in, in writing. You need to look at several different aspects. You need to get with them face to face, which is one of the first things that I, I did. Um, perfect page for this, actually. I wanted to see right away what were the actual results of the trades that are being done. And, you know, was it, was I going to be able to see any of the algorithms? Right. So and the reason I say this is a perfect page here is, um, you know, I didn't get to meet EverFX in Florida, but what I did is I jumped on a plane. My wife and I, we went out to Florida. It was actually happened to be Waskar's 40th uh, birthday at the time. And so we went out there, we went out on a yacht, spent some time with them. And, and uh, over the course of about four or five days, Justin, you came down as well. And I uh, was there in Kissimmee and yeah. uh, in Florida. And so, um, matter of fact, I think the very first, if I'm not mistaken, very first power team call was done there uh, right. next to the pool. Huh? That's yeah. right. Yeah. And uh, so as, as we were there, Waskar had opened up a, a trade account just a few days prior to me getting there. And uh, so by the time I got there, he had already gone up a couple hundred thousand dollars on this account. And he was just using one of the algorithms um, on this account. And what I experienced over the course of, now I told you it was very aggressive, okay? <laughs> the yeah. trading could be done extremely aggressive. And so what he was doing was he would set a trade in the morning and then uh, when you'd come back, that trade had already been closed out and he'd set one in the evening, get up the next morning, set up another one. So he was only trading twice a day. Whereas, you know, with Cash FX and the full-time trading team, they might be in, you know, 400, 500 trades plus at any given time. Yeah. All right. So we're just talking about a small sample of that. But I, I witnessed the, this account going up um, it was hundreds of thousands of dollars yeah. in a matter of four days. Yeah. And so it was really quite amazing um, that, you know, and the percentage of that was, was astronomical as well. It wasn't like a, you know, $20 million account that was, you know, being traded and went up just a few points. No, it was, it was, he traded uh, fairly aggressively on it and uh, almost doubled the account in, a, in less than a week and a half. So, you know, the system has the ability to be very aggressive, but the problem is when the regulatory authorities look at something like that, they go, no, that's not possible, you know, and then you have to prove why it is. Right. And so when you're rolling something like this out, <clears throat> just because you can do something doesn't mean that it should be put to the public right away. It needs to evolve over time. And um, so anyways, that's why I thought this was a perfect page is obviously, you know, at that point, Wasca already had, you know, the trade team in place uh, that were using the EAs, expert advisors, also known as bots, uh, you know, the different proprietary, you know, algorithms and strategies, the risk management, all that was in place to you guys, because he already had that going on for a year prior to launching the company. Six months prior to launching the company is when he came up with the comp plan. Why is that so important that it went in that order? A lot of companies will come out with their comp plan, sell you on their comp plan, and then go, hey, isn't this great? Well, okay, but what's your product? You right. know? And uh, I just lost a really good friend of mine, uh, Jeff Babner. He was one of the top three MLM attorneys in the, in, in the world. And uh, Jeff always talked about, you know, when it came to simplifying, is this a product that's meant to be sold or a product that's meant to be consumed? Okay. Right. And there really is a big difference here, guys, because um, in, on the MLM side of things, when it comes to regulatory, um, you need to have a product that's meant to be consumed. If you're not going to consume that product, then what are you doing selling it? Okay. Now, <clears throat> consuming can be of different things. Consuming in this aspect is you're going in, you're going through the education, you're learning something, you're learning a skill set, okay, that let's say something happened in your life and you had to leave Cash FX behind, okay? Whatever that might be. I can't pers personally think of a reason, but let's say that happened. 
okay? And you had to leave Cash FX behind. It doesn't mean you're leaving your skill set behind that you learned through the academy. You can take that with you. And whatever level you're at, whatever level of understanding, which are the academy, the e-learning is very interactive. Okay, so not only are you watching it, listening to it, but you're also interacting with it, answering different questions, putting puzzles together, so on and so forth, which allows you to really absorb more. But again, remember, you can go back as many times as you want. Okay, so you're consuming that product at that point. So now you've got a consumable product. Jeff used to say, you know, is this tuna fish sandwich for, uh, for selling or is it for eating? Because if it's only for selling, then you don't have a product. Yeah. All right. This product here, anybody that's gone through it understands that it starts off with, with trading 101 and works its way through more advanced and more advanced. And we are working on the upper modules. Uh, we've got a full-time team that works on the academy five days a week, um, you know, anywhere from eight to 12 hours a day. Uh, there's been a couple of shifts in the, in the direction of the academy, um, really for, like I said earlier in the call, scalability, yeah. okay? So if you want to be around for a long time, each, each thing that you develop, it needs to be scalable, okay? Because let's say you want to go in and add an extra module right in the middle of something. Well, if you're too locked in, you can't adjust what you've already done. Therefore, you have to scrap it and start over and rebuild it. So we thought, okay, now is the time to maybe make some of these adjustments. Now is the time to really make sure it's scalable. And that's what's been going on. So there's been a little bit of delay here. But uh, I assure you guys, the academy is progressing so that you can get into the more advanced professional series and on into the Supreme Series. I can't wait for everybody to get to the Supreme Series because this, guys, is really where my trading understanding for the Forex changed. Yeah. Okay? So all along, you're putting all these pieces in place. You're learning a skill set. But in the Supreme Series, this is where you learn the psychology of trading. This is where you need to take and separate your emotion from your money. All right. Now, a lot of you might be going, oh, that's not possible. But listen, okay, along the way, there's been different packages that have been added in, allowing you to put money in your pocket. Okay. Earn while you learn, put money in your pocket so you can keep learning along the way. Right. Okay. So as you're doing that, um, and, and you keep putting more and more money, which was, this was part of evolution as well. Not all these packages were here. Right. Some, sometimes you had to write a package for, you know, two times, maybe three times if you had to take some money home. So what we did is we went in looked at all the weak spots and then make suggestions back to Cash FX Corporate saying, hey, if we put packages in each one of these spots, people can literally put money in their pocket as they're learning. Okay. Really? So it's, it really became an earn while you learn type of a scenario. And so the, my point in all of that, guys, is when you first jump into something, and whether you put your toe in the water, you jump in with both feet, okay? When you do that, you don't know the end of the story yet. You only know the beginning because that's where you started. That's where everybody starts is at the beginning, okay? If you've never been involved in Forex trading before, then you probably need to understand the terminology. It was like when I first went to the U.S. Air Force. I had no clue what they were talking about. They were using all these slang words and te terminology. I had no idea what it was, but I had to learn that, okay? Same thing here. If you guys don't understand some of the terminology and some of the basics of Forex trading, then you have no business going on to the next module and the next one and the next one. Matter of fact, there's no way you could be ready for the Supreme Series if you didn't go through the elemental in advance first, okay? But when you get down to the, the uh, Supreme Series, keep in mind, You've built up a nest egg. You've built up some wealth over that course of time, okay? Now you have more money to put into the market, or maybe you just earn your way all the way up to the 100,000 package, and that's all you ever put in. Totally up to you, okay? But once you hit that Supreme Series, you're going to start to understand how to detach your emotion and your mind from your money. Yeah. And that's so critical. I'll, 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 I'll uh, give a quick scenario why, okay? Let's say that you just went into a trade, and you didn't fully understand what you were doing, you didn't go about your trade mantra, and you over leveraged yourself because the Forex market allows you to have a tremendous amount of leverage, okay? These are things that are being managed for you guys behind the scenes. You don't even have to think about this when you come into right. Cash Effect right away, okay? You don't, you don't even have to worry about that. But there are people, Edwin and his team are thinking about this every single day. They're dealing with this every day, okay? So let's say that you went into a trade too heavy, you lose that trade. Well, human emotion gets involved. 
right? And so you start to get worked up. Okay, I'll make that money back. So you go in a little bit more leveraged on the next trade. And then let's say you lose that one too. Now you're in a major spiral, all right? So what do you do? You do it again. And again, next thing you know, your account's gone, okay? I, so many times I've seen that happen with, with traders. Um, I, I've been involved in a lot of different contests over the years for, for traders and things. And a lot of times paper trading and stuff. But it was really to test my skill set. I wanted to know I understood it. When you reach the Supreme Series, what it shows you is don't lose your trade mantra. If you lose a trade, it's okay. You've got a lot more trades coming behind it. You don't there have is, to make it up on the next trade. No, you don't. There's always one thing about this market is it's so big, which creates what? It creates an unlimited amount of opportunity and right. open trades to get involved in. Okay. Right. So every series of this is absolutely critical. And uh, so anyways, guys, um, this, Justin, if you want to turn the slide or wherever you're at now, I'll just keep talking here. Um, so let's stay here because uh, I want to, I want to interject just a couple of things real quick. I want to ask our, our audience here. Uh, if you have tried on your own to open up a broker account before and trade Forex on your own, just do us a favor and type the word Forex in the chat. Uh, for those of you that have the chat open, if you've tried to trade Forex on your own before, uh, we also like to, to be, to be honest here. I'd, I'd love to know, you know, if, if you guys lost, I mean, put the, put the word loss. Last time we had a lot of people that came out and said, listen, I've tried and I continue to lose. You know, we, we know that the statistic out there is 90% of the 90 million, 90 million home-based retail traders, 90% of them lose most of their money. Most of their money. And so the education here is crucial. But I, but I just want to I just want to recap in 30 seconds. We're dealing with a licensed broker, a licensed regulated broker in EverFX. EverFX is not going to strategically partner with CashFX, come to our launch event if we weren't really trading. That's number one. <laughs> what do you got there? Well, the card. They came. They came to the launch event. They handed their cards out. I've never seen another company. Is that Najib? That's Najib's card, right? It's, it's, Pablo, Pablo, yeah, yeah never. Right? We've never yeah. seen another company in the space. One, not only have they not revealed who their broker is, they certainly have not invited them to a public setting. So we know that, right? Uh, we know that's going on. We also know that there's real trades taking place because all you have to do is log into your back office and Ron and and, and his team, in conjunction with uh, with with uh, the uh, uh, Cash Effects engineers. And in conjunction with EverX, EverFX has put together this web TV where they have given us 100% transparency. And listen, we had Jeremy on uh, yesterday and then last week, Jeremy's been pro trading for seven years and he now sits in front of that web TV and he looks for opportunities. Not only is he making money through cash effects, but he's looking for opportunities where he can place some other trades and almost like doing some mirror trading on his own already. You know, over and over, we have these pro traders who are coming on and looking at that web TV and saying, man, undeniably, these guys are placing trades and they're winning. That's, that's the transparency piece that was missing in the space. There's no doubt. Absolutely. And, and, you know, I've had the opportunity, Justin, because I do, you know, work with the legal team. I was able to, uh, thanks to my friend, Jeff Abner, um, you know, he helped us uh, get in the direction to structure the legal team for cash FX. Yeah. Uh, us in the direction of the, of the SEC attorneys. And then uh, from there, you know, we went in the direction to uh, get the uh, CFTC attorneys, which, you know, um, it was, it was, uh, you yeah, know, actually, I, I wasn't going to touch too much on the legal, but I will tell you guys that the legal team that sits behind cash FX is it, it's a firm with about 1200 attorneys and the head attorney on this is named Dan. Uh, he's a former senior investigator from the SEC and then went on to finish his career as a senior investigator for the CFTC. So this gentleman knows exactly how to shut companies down for violation, but at the same time, he knows how to keep them in business and, you know, alleviate any violations and things. Yeah. So, um, couldn't have asked for a better, you know, legal team uh, for cash FX and what we have in front of us. Right. So, okay. Uh, so, so we've gone over, we've gone over a lot, Ron. Go ahead, man. Continue. I was just going to say the reason I brought up the legal team was that, um, you know, one of the things I, I, uh, have to do when dealing with the legal team is gather certain documents from cash effects corporate and go over them with the legal team. And, and uh, right after or at Panama, matter of fact, uh, one of the documents that we gathered at that time was over 401 open trades on a trade sheet that I went over with the, uh, 
with the legal team and they were blown away with the results. And uh, so, you know, all the way back to November, I've had the opportunity to look at, look at certain things that most people won't get their eyes on. And uh, it's been, it's, it's, uh, it's pretty incredible to see on the surface. Um, they're doing what they say they're going to do. And then also behind the scenes, they're still doing what they say they're going to do. So there is no, um, you know, wizard of Oz behind the scenes, you know, behind the curtain that's doing, you know, funny business. It's, it, it's who you see out front. It's Waskar, it's Edwin, it's, you know, it's, it's just John and Justin and myself and so on. I mean, the people that are, that are, now there is a huge team behind cash FX. There's a huge team behind the conversion pros. We do all the software, the yep. back office commission tracking, you know, advertising or uh, marketing, so on and so forth. Um, but both teams are evolving rapidly. And uh, so- Evolving yeah. and growing. I mean, growing Absolutely. the cash <laughs> support team has what tripled or quadrupled in size since we began. Absolutely. Yeah. As, as well as we put in different uh, AI technology. Yep. Uh, to help out I the, saw that today, man. I put in a support ticket and it popped up. A, it was the first time it popped up a message to say, is this what you were looking for? Now, it wasn't yep. what I was looking for, but it, it, leaves, it gives you the feedback to, I guess, help improve those results, right? Yes, yeah, because see, anytime that AI, guys, is uh, it's like a baby. All right. And so when you first launch AI, you got to train it. You got to teach it things. Right. So it starts off kind of crawling and then it'll, you know, then it'll walk, kind of wobble a little bit. And then it gets to running. That all takes time to get yeah. to that point. So as you're looking at these different uh, responses that are coming up as you're putting in your support tickets, if it's not what you're looking for, don't say yes. Because if you say yes, you're not going to get a response to your support ticket because you already got the answer. Right. Right. So if it's not what you're looking for, let's say you want a 2FA reset. And it tells you, you know, um, based on security reasons, you know, you got to ask your sponsor to do your 2FA reset. Don't say, yeah, that gave me what I was looking for. Say no. Okay. If you're the sponsor and you're trying to submit the ticket, don't say, yeah, that was what I needed. Say no, it's not what I needed. That way it teaches the AI as well. Oh, you need to go to the next step here. Okay. And then your ticket will be submitted. But yeah, things like that. We're trying to alleviate some of the tickets, trying to get the answers to you guys quicker. And uh, just, you know, overall better support. And, uh, but yeah, it's been a, a real evolution. Um, what CashFX has been through already, it just, in the short time it's been open, that's two years worth of growth on any other company. I mean, it's just literally been, <clears throat> you know, anywhere from 15 to 18 hour days, six, seven days a week. And uh, I'm not talking from one individual. We're talking about from a team of people. There's been companies I've been, I've gone into in the past that do it wrong where they go out there and then they don't, you know, they don't get a legal team until after it's too late. Now they got legal problems. Now they're trying to fight legal problems on and on. I've heard different rumors about cash FX guys. There is no legal issues going on with cash FX right now. Um, there is, it was, it was a, um, it was something that I talked to Waskar about at the very beginning that, you know, if, if you're going to be a long, long, you know, a, a legacy company with longevity, uh, there's certain things that we need to address. We need to go and get our own legal team. We need to start to show the intention of the company is to be legal and compliant in every country. Right. We need to, you know, take certain steps. And so um, compliance, legal compliance is not an overnight thing, guys. Um, it, it could easily, give you an example of the United States, it could easily take a year and well over a million dollars to, to get compliant. Okay. And depending on what it is that you have to do to be compliant, it could cost you upwards of $2 million. I mean, it is not cheap. We've got a large team of, of uh, legal counsel, like I say, about 1200 on the team, all uh, experts in their, in their um, own right. And, you know, whether they be KYC and sanctions or whatever their specialty is, a lot of the attorneys that we work with from this firm are former heads to different departments for the government. Right. Okay. So as we're addressing these things, we're getting the best possible answers and guidance that we can get. And then, you know, and then we navigate. So phase two, I know that was your question, Justin. Phase two really is fluid. It is coming. Um, there is a good plan uh, for phase two. Matter of fact, uh, at the, on the last legal call, uh, we all agreed, you know, including the attorneys. Oh yeah, that's, that's probably the best possible path forward right there. Let's go that direction. Okay. But I get asked all the time, Hey, what's the ETA on reopening the United States? No. I don't know. I have no, no idea. Um, uh, because I don't have a crystal ball. When it's ready. And, and what's that? When it's ready. Exactly. When it's, like, when it's, it's ready. Like when my and, wife and, is cooking dinner and I get smell it and I go out there and ask her how long until food till the, till dinner's done. And she always tells me when it's finished. Exactly. <laughs> well, you know, it's kind of like Justin, I know you, you know, my CMO, uh, or excuse me, my, my CTO, Jamie Beck. Oh, Jamie, yeah. And, uh, <clears throat> uh, 
you know, when I first started working with Jamie, uh, I didn't understand the mindset of a, of a programming engineer or software engineer, okay? Um, but when I see it as something simple, and I'm giving you kind of a lateral understanding here. From the outside looking in, okay, you might go, oh, that's simple. You just need to just change this and this. But it's not always like that, guys. When you change this and this, it could open a whole new can of worms or go down all these different rabbit holes that you never thought of before. But in order to be fully compliant and, and, and really secure that longevity for your legacy base, your, your legacy company, you've got to go down all those rabbit holes. Okay. And so depending on how far and how deep those go, will determine on what kind of time frame it is. You know, obviously, you know, if, if CashFX could open its doors back up safely right here in the United States right now, today, they would do it. But it wouldn't be the best interest in, for everybody involved. You know, the best interest for everybody involved is to continue through the legal compliance, check all the boxes, you know, cross the T's, dot the I's, and then when your legal counsel says, yep, you're absolutely good to go, then you go forward again. And honestly, guys, um, I don't care how old you are, you know, if you look at this little moment in time where you're waiting for this, yeah, it's kind of like Christmas morning comes around and then you don't get to open your gifts where everybody else did. Okay. Kind of sucks. Right. But the fact is when the U S is legal and compliant and we open the U S doors again, it will be, a, it'll be a catapult for the rest of the world because everybody's watching what's going on right here in the United States, because the U S is one of the toughest on regulation. So it, it'll be that springboard that, you know, that everybody's looking for. So, you know, that's, that's about all I can say about that. If you have any international business partners or anything, you know, you can get with them and work, you know, other markets. You know, you just don't work here in the United States right now. So, and, and let me just touch on it because because we do. I mean, this is this is a record for us for the last two weeks. We have 128 first time guests on today. A hundred twenty eight. Welcome, guests. welcome to the call. Uh, this is a little bit out of the ordinary for us because we're a little over the hour, and we've you know Ron is sharing a lot of valuable insight, uh, things that we don't usually dive into this level of detail on the call. And so, if you're here as a guest. What I want to say is this, uh, you want to find a place where you can become a part of, where you know it's going to be around, like Ron said, and, and Waskar's vision, 20 years. And so that's why these things are being done uh, in the aspect uh, that they, in the format that they are being done. And so you're absolutely in the right place at the right time. So we've covered a lot. We've talked about transparency. We've talked about technology. We've talked about live trades. We've talked about the academy consist continually being developed and enhanced for scalability. Absolutely. I'm actually going to uh, excuse myself here from the call. Oscar has been waiting for me here for a while. So uh, we got to go over some stuff here today. But uh, thank you so much for uh, having me here on the call, Justin. And, and uh, hopefully I can find time to make it back out to another one here, uh, you know, soon. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's it's, it's been a while. Uh, matter of fact, I think this is my first one I've actually been on with you guys. And it is. Uh, it's just, it's, sometimes it's hard to slow things down behind the scenes. But uh, welcome to the 128 guests. Uh, you guys are looking at an incredible business model here. And uh, to everybody else, thank you so much for your, your focus, your hard work uh, here with CashFX. So, Justin, thanks for your leadership, my friend. Appreciate you, Ron. And uh, we'll see you on the next call, buddy.